again, BookTube. Thanks for stopping by my channel. I hope that Quiet Calm Books can provide you with a safe space to talk and think about the literature that you love. I have a lot of amazing bookstores to show you today, but let me give you a quick life update while we walk around the scenic Upper East Side of Manhattan. If you just want to see the bookstores, feel free to skip ahead. So I know I haven't posted all summer, but to be fair, I've had a ton of crazy stuff going on. I graduated college, got a full-time job, and got a new puppy. I posted him on my bookstagram, and you'll probably see him in some upcoming videos. But still, I want to make sure all of my viewers know that books and booktube are still important to me, and that I'm grateful to everyone who consumes my content. Therefore, as an apology for my absence, I'm returning with the long-awaited sequel to my book shopping in New York City video. If you haven't seen my previous vid, you can check it out here. I'll be exploring six bookstores in this video, just like last time. Since my bookstore vlogs are my most popular videos, I want to continue to visit as many bookstores as I can before I leave the New York area. However, because New York City streets are basically overflowing with bookstores, I thought it would make the most sense to do a separate video for each borough. That being said, all of this video's bookstores will be in Manhattan, so this will probably be my last Manhattan video for a while. After that, I'll be touring bookstores in Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and maybe Staten Island. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with today's six bookstores. The first bookstore I visited was Argosy Bookstore, located at 116 East 59th Street. This is an adorably quaint used bookstore that has been in New York since 1925. It has a unique selection of rare out-of-print books, as well as maps, autographs, and art. This outdoor section in particular is so enticing and really draws you into the warm glow of the rest of the shop. There were art books and regular books on sale for $3. There were also these display cases full of old posters and autographs, and it's clear that this store has a very rich history. And if you thought the outside was enticing, the inside is even better. I can only describe the store as nautical in its theming with the combined aesthetic of the teal walls, these sort of lantern-like lighting fixtures, a huge treasure chest on the second floor, and my favorite, a pirate ship model hanging from the ceiling. Also, some of these old books really do look like they were recovered from a sunken pirate ship. One of my favorite parts of Argosy is that it's so much more than just books. I absolutely loved all of the art that was hanging on the walls. They also had these prints for sale, and something about the sort of weird little animal diagrams is so endearing to me. Their artists probably wouldn't appreciate me calling them weird, but just know that I mean that in a loving way. I feel like these would look really cute in a dorm room or just in a house with an artsy theme. This bookstore is so inviting and cozy, and the staff was friendly too. It seems like this would be a really great place to come and study in the middle of the week if you live in New York and you're in school. It's fairly quiet, and you're already surrounded by historical artifacts, so it makes it easier to romanticize your studying. Even more important, if you want to visit for research purposes, the staff seems like true book experts. As you all probably know, I read mostly YA fantasy and contemporary myself, and you're not going to find anything like that here. These books are old, they're one of a kind, and I'm sure the staff can help you make sense of the organized chaos for your research projects.
Okay, are these not some of the most breathtaking books you've ever seen? Technically, these are decorative bindings, so they're meant to just sit on a shelf and look pretty, but I can't stop thinking about pirates when I look at them. They're so magical, and I love them. This second floor was full of especially rare books that were all behind glass. There was not an ugly cover here, and I find myself wondering why publishers don't make book covers like this anymore, because I would love to have a whole bookshelf full of gorgeous covers like these. There were even some books in other languages like French, which I thought was a really unique touch. This center table was full of even more organized chaos and clutter, which was just the vibe of this entire store in general. Like I said, not just books, not even just art, but research papers and stacks of writings from the store owners. Beautiful, organized, bookish chaos. My favorite section at Argosy was definitely the children's section. I quickly realized that I wasn't going to find any classics within my budget, since most of the Shakespeare books and other editions were super rare, so I made a beeline for the children's section in the hopes of maybe finding some cute, antique fairy tales. Unfortunately, these editions were all pricey too, but it was fun to look. I found Snow White, a cute Raggedy Ann and Andy book, and a book called Snippy and Snappy about two mice. All of the illustrations were so cute, and it was wild to see the names of publishing companies that don't even exist anymore. I recently finished a really good book called Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dober, and I found myself thinking about it while walking through this store. It's a book set in the past, present, and future that alternates genres between contemporary thriller, historical fiction, and sci-fi. It tells intersecting stories about the power of storytelling, and when I go into used bookstores like this, I'm reminded that even though these stories might not be relevant anymore, they were once someone's treasures, and they might still be passed down through families. If you're a fan of classics, fairy tales, and pretty antiques with nautical vibes, Argosy Bookstore is worth a look. I'm almost sad that I'm not in school anymore because I can't study in this gorgeous atmosphere. Next up, we have one of my favorite bookstores in New York, although I have a lot left to explore, so I guess I shouldn't say that too soon. This bookstore is right near Columbia University. In this video, I visited the location at 536 West 112th Street. It does get a little confusing because there are actually two book culture locations and they're only two streets apart from each other. The smaller store is on 114th and Broadway and that one is called Book Culture on Broadway. The one I visited is tucked around the corner on 112th. I'm not sure why this is, and both the stores are really fun, but I personally prefer the original 112th location. When you walk into book culture, you get the impression that you are surrounded not just by books, but literally by bookish culture and bookish lifestyle. Book culture has everything that a book lover could need, from notebooks and pens to aesthetic posters and cute tote bags. It also has this very memorable mural of a bunch of funky little people reading with their arms outstretched. Book Culture puts this mural on practically all of their merchandise and something about it just resonates with me. I really should have written down the name of the artist, but I didn't catch it, so if anyone figures out who it is, please let me know. As for the books themselves, there are just so many. 
This is the type of bookstore where you have to walk in with an open mind, as you should in all bookstores, but especially this one, because many of the books at Book Culture are not your typical Barnes & Noble finds. I would say that book culture definitely specializes in literary and experimental fiction more than anything else, so you won't find a lot of YA or thrillers here, but sometimes it's a good thing. Since it is right next to Columbia, I'm assuming they choose books for a college-age audience. I love the bright colors of all of the book displays here, and they also have tons of cute plushies, stationery, and stickers. I adore anthropomorphized objects and foods with cute faces, so I was just in love. This particular stationery brand is called A Jar of Pickles, and it is so cute. The stairs leading to the second floor are lined with books, and I really love that bookstore employees are so willing to let books completely take over the space. It truly adds to the vibe. This second floor is mostly home to the many textbooks used by Columbia University students, but it also has a lot of bookish decor and trinkets. If you're in need of cute bookends, crystals, or anything witchy and cottagecore, then this is the bookstore to check out. I was really excited about this book table because most of my favorite contemporary writers are on here. Mieko Kawakami, Sally Rooney, Madeline Miller, Sayaka Murata, I thought about buying a few books, but I'm still working through my last haul, so I decided to wait. I can't recommend book culture enough. It's so cute and there are just so many unique books and bookish trinkets to explore. I will warn you that you might end up spending a few extra hours looking at all the cool stuff though. The third bookstore we visited was the Corner Bookstore at 1313 Madison Avenue on the Upper East Side. This area is so cute and it's surprisingly quiet for NYC. I think it would be so fun to live across from a bookstore that's as cozy and inviting as the Corner Bookstore. This is the type of shop that you want to visit on a Sunday morning after waking up late and treating yourself to coffee and a pastry. NYC is home to some of the biggest and most unique bookstores in the country, but there's something to be said for a quiet little corner store like this that you can fit into your daily routine. The window displays and flowers lining the storefront are so cute, and the architecture on the inside is even more fascinating. This is a very small and intimate shop that encourages you to talk to other customers and employees about the books that you love. As I was walking around, I heard multiple strangers striking up conversations with each other and recommending books, which is just such a beautiful thing to hear. The Corner Bookstore has mostly children's books, as well as a carefully curated selection of adult books chosen for their quality. 
This bookstore feels more like a suburban neighborhood bookshop than one that you would find in a city, and that's what makes it so special. Its book selection might not be for everyone, but if you're looking for a bookstore that reminds you of home, this one is perfect. The bookstore employees make a point to personally know the neighborhood's residents, and there are employee recommendations stuck to books throughout the store. Of course I had to check out the YA section. I'm a very seasonal reader and because it's almost October, that means I get to start stocking up on spooky books to read, which is so exciting. Right now I'm reading a YA anthology called Vampires Never Get Old. I love YA anthologies because it gives me a chance to read authors that I wouldn't otherwise pick up. I initially bought the book because I wanted to read V.E. Schwab's First Kill, and while I loved that story, I also discovered two other authors that I really like, Rebecca Rowanhorse and Tessa Gratton. I didn't see either of them at the corner bookstore, but I'm going to keep an eye out as I continue to visit more stores. Overall, the corner bookstore is great if you're on the Upper East Side and in the mood for a quick and cozy bookshop stop. Bookstore number four is Codex, located at 1 Bleecker Street. This bookshop is small, but it's truly a hidden gem. It has a very urban feel to it and is located right next to a coffee shop called Think Coffee. It has three book carts outside, and the brick walls are decorated with art, posters, stickers, graffiti, and memorable sayings about love and life. There's also these adorable outdoor seating areas, so you can drink your coffee and read a book at the same time. And of course, the adorable mural that says, coffee, books, that's really all you need. I love the little conversation happening between this bookstore and this coffee shop. The inside of Codex is very narrow and cozy. The shelves are an unfinished light wood, which is a unique look. Codex also makes good use of its vertical space, placing the oldest and most visually interesting books near the top of the shelves, and anything you might actually want to reach towards the middle and bottom. I also loved the white brick of the walls. Because the space was so narrow and crowded, it was hard to get a good look at everything, but Codex had what I thought was a fantastic selection. There was a great mix of classics, retro reads, and new releases. I was so impressed with the sci-fi, fantasy, and horror selection overall. For such a small space, Codex has all the essentials. Used bookstores are usually aesthetically gorgeous, but in terms of finding books that you actually want to read, they can be a hit or miss. But it's clear that the owner of this store actually put care into choosing books that people want to read and buy.
Codex was full of old editions of books that are still relevant and interesting today. You can see books like Dune and The Hunger Games, titles that people are definitely still talking about, as well as popular books from Stephen King, Neil Gaiman, Lev Grossman, George R.R. R. Martin, and Anne Rice. These aren't just books that are picked over, these are popular books that are simply used. The contemporary section was also lovely, and that's what was so surprising about Codex. There was a great mix of old and new books. I really appreciated the balance between American and non-American authors. They included Murakami, Ocean Vong, and Sally Rooney in this section. And they chose to place not one, but two books by my favorite author, Italo Calvino, on this shelf, which is automatic brownie points for me. Here are a few shots of some of the prettiest antique books at Codex. It makes me wonder how small, independently owned bookstores like this one get started. Was this place just started by an avid reader like me who collected one too many editions? And where did she find them all? It's amazing to think about. Codex also had this unusual little section for poetry chapbooks, dramas, and plays. They were giving away Poetry Project Newsletter number 269 for free, so I picked this one up. This newsletter includes poems, essays, and interviews, some of which are from the Prison and Justice Writing Program. Finally, for such a small bookstore, Codex had a great collection of literature in languages other than English. There were books in Spanish, Portuguese, German, French, and probably others too. There are so many gorgeous bookstores in Manhattan, but Codex really is a hidden gem that is not to be missed. The fifth bookstore I had planned to visit was Three Lives and Company, located in West Village at 154 West 10th Street. This store had a large selection of poetry and social commentary books. Unfortunately, the owners did not allow filming in their store, so the best I can do is show you the window display, which is still very pretty. I did promise six bookstores in this video, but since I couldn't tour Three Lives and Company, I spent some time just walking around West Village to see if I could find any other bookstores. I love living in an artsy city like New York because there are always a few bookstores within at least two or three blocks of each other. And sure enough, I stumbled across this little outdoor bookshop called Bravo's Book Nook. These outdoor book stands are common in the city, but this one was just so charming and had a little bit of extra flair. The selection was small since it was in a converted outdoor dining area. Still, something about looking at books in a wooden structure on a rainy day is so comforting to me. Last but certainly not least, we have Mysterious Bookshop, located at 58 Warren Street. In my opinion, this is the perfect bookstore to wrap up this video. I know I say this about pretty much every bookstore I visit, but Mysterious Bookshop has to be one of my new favorite bookstores in NYC. This bookstore is a specialty store that stocks exclusively mystery fiction. Personally, I've read a lot of Gillian Flynn, but I generally prefer fantasy to mysteries. However, let me just say that if mysteries are your thing, you cannot miss this bookstore. They have every subgenre of mystery, including detective, crime, thrillers, espionage, and suspense. They have genres and titles that I've never even heard of. They have limited editions of new mysteries, rare antique editions of old mysteries, and everything in between. I overheard one of the booksellers say that the owner of the store was a mystery book editor, very famous in the publishing world, and that he had helped edit a number of the books in the store. The staff here was so friendly and had endless recommendations when I asked for help finding a book. I can undoubtedly say that this store was one of the most gorgeous that I have ever seen. 
The high ceilings and the never-ending shelves definitely reminded me of Belle's library from Beauty and the Beast, and as if that wasn't beautiful enough, the store had rolling library ladders. I'm pretty sure it's every book lover's dream to have enough books and enough shelves to require one of these fancy ladders. Many of the books in the store were also signed, and there was actually a book signing occurring right as I was filming, which was kind of cool. There were just so many little touches that made this store welcoming and unique. In addition to signed books and limited copies, the store was interspersed with staff recommendations. I love seeing these because it tells me that a bookstore has personality and cares about the books that they select. There were also cute mystery themed board games and couches so that you can sit and read right in the store. I may not know many mystery writers, but I do know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the mysterious bookshop had not just one bookshelf, but an entire bookcase full of his works. Some of these editions were really old too. Every time I gazed around this bookshop, I could not stop my jaw from dropping. It was seriously breathtaking. I think this store was also decorated for Halloween, although I like to think that the shop has skeletons, bats, and other weird creatures hanging up year round to fit their aesthetic. Here are just a few of the books that the Mysterious Bookshop staff recommended to me. These are Nameless Acts of Cruelty by Julie Cameron, Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney, and the Mystery Writers of America cookbook. And I think that's going to do it for part two of my book shopping in NYC series. Wow. Thank you to everyone who has waited this long for a part two, and if you're discovering my channel for the first time, I hope you'll stick around to see my tours of bookstores in the other boroughs. So what did you guys think? How do these bookstores compare to your favorite bookstore? And which of these six was your favorite? I really don't know if I can choose a favorite. Book culture will always have a special place in my heart, but I was pleasantly surprised by the others, especially Codex and the Mysterious Bookshop. I'll definitely be visiting them again. If you have any more NYC bookstore recommendations for me, or even just general book recommendations, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more bookstore tours, book hauls, and book reviews, please take some time to subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.